Welcome to our review on electron microscopy. The first thing we need to consider then is the meaning of a key word that we're going to use when looking at a comparison between the light microscopes and the electron microscope. And that word is resolution. Quite simply, resolution is the smallest distance between two points that we can still see them as separate entities, so they're not blurred together. If we consider our light microscope then, what we find is they're actually quite limited because any structure smaller than 0.2 micrometers just can't be seen with a light microscope. So we need something better. The better microscope then is the electron microscope. And back in the 1930s, we actually developed this new type of microscope that rather than using light, uses a beam of electrons. And through the use of this electron microscope, it's actually enabled us not only to see a lot more of the subcellular structures, but also to understand how they work. And I've given you a couple of images at the bottom. On the left, we've got a mitochondria, so you can see a lot more detail there. And on the right is a chloroplast. When it comes to considering these electron microscopes, we actually have two types. The first one is the transmission electron microscope, or TEM. And these are the ones that are able to produce the most magnified images. The second one, the scanning electron microscope or SEM, these are actually incredibly clever because what they're able to do is produce three dimensional images of the surface. So on the right there, you can see the actual zoomed in 3D surface of a bug. If we just take a moment to compare light microscopes with electron microscopes, what I've done is I've given you a box of facts for each one. So if we think about the light microscope, first of all, it's got a few key advantages to it. First of all, it's cheap to buy and operate, and it's also incredibly small and portable. If you want to go and observe things in the middle of a jungle, the rainforest, you can take a light microscope with you and view things there in the field. It can also view specimens that are either living or dead, and we can prepare samples really quite easily to look at under a light microscope. We can also be able to see the natural colour of the sample, unless obviously we've used a stain there. There are though some disadvantages associated with our light microscope, and that's to do with the resolution and the magnification. So it's got a lower resolution up to only about 200 nanometers and a lower magnification up to only about 2000 times. If we now compare that to our electron microscope, then first of all, our electron microscope is actually really large and blooming expensive. Not only that, but we've also got to keep it under controlled conditions. So we need to keep it in a room where the temperature and so on are all in very controlled way. So we can't take this out in the field with us. Any specimens we want to view have to be dead because otherwise it will interfere with the beam of electrons, so no good. And to prepare a sample to view is incredibly complex. We'll only get black and white images, but we could add false color to it later on in processing if we so desired. There are, however, two very important advantages of the electron microscope. The first one is its higher resolution and we can resolve up to about 0.2 nanometers. And it's got a much higher magnification up to about 2 million times. So what we can see is there are pros and cons to each. And your choice of microscope is very much decided by what on earth it is you want to look at and why. As you've probably noticed that when we're talking about sizes to do with microscopes, we're talking about incredibly small sizes. Now, because of this, quite often we'll either be converting to nanometers or we'll use standard form. And do remember that when we're using standard form, it's the same as in maths. It's your decimal number times 10 to the power n meters. Do remember that that n can either be positive or negative. And if it's a negative power, then that means that the number is less than one whereas positive powers show the number is more than one. So just make sure you understand how to use standard form and how to convert between micrometers, nanometers, etc.
Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now talk about why we use electron microscopes. You can compare the electron to the light microscope and also just recall those key facts about their resolution and magnification.